offload, hot pass. He caught it. All right. Welcome to the hook. What do we got today, man? Uh, we're previewing, uh, or reviewing rather, the uh, the training squad named for the USA Eagles fall tour to Europe, uh, who they will be playing both Germany and Georgia. So what do we got? Uh, I'm wondering why only 28 players were named. You can take up to 30 overseas when on for men w during male tournaments. Uh, what that also means is that uh, two of those guys get deactivated once you go overseas. Uh, England, for instance, they're not going overseas, but they named a training squad of 34. So we could have named 34. And four guys could stay home once we, like, after the camp. And pretty sure camp, since they got named, all these guys are coming into camp this week. Oh, or next week. I, USAR didn't release, you know, how long the camp was and if it was open to the public or not, or where it was. So that's, you know, I always want to know what's going on with that and why they don't do that, but, you know, it is what it is. So, we've named 28 players. Uh, this means that you don't have to cut two guys and tell them to go get their fitness on by themselves uh, when you go overseas. But it, I don't understand why, because of where we are right now, why we just don't bring guys in, because we're going to have a long camp and we see where things fall and let guys compete. But it is, like I said, it is what it is. So, but Dave, Mags, what, what are you guys doing? Some of these selections, like, I love you guys, but some of these selections hurt. All right. Um, so let's just get into it. I'll go into my analysis following uh, my announcements. So props, my boys, to my left and right. We got Eric Fry, loose head. Olive Khalifi, tie head. Play some loose head. Uh, currently uh, the captain for the Seattle Saracens, BC Premier League team, and just signed with Seattle Seawolves. Uh, back to Eric Fry. He plays with Racing Club Van. Or is it, no, Rugby Club Van. It's Racing Club Narbonne, who's the other racing club, which means athletic, apparently. Uh, Patty Ryan, his uh, trial with Bath following being cut from Newcastle has ended. Uh, he played in the A-League a bunch of times. I think he was just really what, they, what you call a medical joker, but he wasn't signed to, you know, he was just on trial, so he just to get you for like five weeks. I'm not sure how that works because the the rules aren't readily available like they are in American sports. Uh, he's play, he's moved back to Cork and is playing with Highfield RFC. Uh, he's a tight head. Uh, Dino Waldron, tight head. He signed with London Scottish uh, earlier in the summer. And he's been playing a lot for them in, off the bench, which is great. Uh going to, so let's look at who, uh, no, we'll get back to who wasn't selected later on, because I want to get through this really quick. Hookers, got Peter Malcolm, uh, he's signed with Austin Elite, and Joe Tofate, who also plays a little bit of loose head, uh, he's with Wooster Warriors, he's been coming off the bench a lot, and, you know, that's fine, but, because, you know, he's starting the year, not even in, you know, on their A-League team. He's starting the year uh, on their premiership side the entire time, whereas last year he played a bunch of A-League matches, played a bunch of Anglo-Irish and Anglo-Welsh Cup games, and that's how, you know, he earned those starts later in the year. So he's already, you know, fit and on the, uh, fitting on the side, ready to go. Um, and he provides a very big lift in the second half when he comes into games. So... Locks, we've got Nate Brakeley out of Nyack, Nick Savetta out of Newcastle. He's also on loan with Doncaster Knights uh, because they have a bunch of injuries and he hasn't been seeing a lot of game time with uh, Newcastle. Ben Landry, uh, he's number five. He's played uh, flanker during the uh, America's Pacific Challenge with, and he's with Glendale Raptors. No one's saying it yet, but he's with Glendale Raptors. 
Then we've got Greg Peterson. He's back in form after spending uh, most of last year injured. He plays with the Glasgow Warriors. Uh, and then you've got uh, David Tamalau, number four. Also plays uh, a bit of flanker, so I'm unsure why he's named as a lock. Uh, Racing Club Narbonne. Then let's get into our flankers. We've got four flankers named. We've got Andrew Duratalo. He just moved from Ealing to Worcester. Uh, he's been playing a lot in, I think, this week. Yeah, so he's played in their two uh, A-League matches. Uh, he didn't um, come away with any man of the match awards like he did with Ealing, but I think he's just he's going to break into their premiership side because he's just so athletic, so fit, it doesn't matter. Uh, then we've got Henko Hamishais. He also plays number eight. He's seen a little bit of hooker out there. Tony Lamborn, Hawks Bay. Uh, question mark I have. And the reason why was he took a red card uh, at the begin middle of last week uh, with Hawks Bay. Uh, there was another guy who took a red card, uh, so I'm wondering about that. And then we got John Quill with the Glendale Raptors. Uh, and let's go into the number eights. Eight men, Cam Dolan, Old Blue New York. He was playing with the Cardiff Blues. Uh, they didn't renew his contract. Uh, then we've got Menu Samoa, Racing Club Toulon. He's finally fit, and they're going to let him go. They're going to let him play, uh, which is awesome. Uh, a lot of French clubs don't like to release their foreign guys. It's kind of kind of sucks, but he must like he's healthy, and you know, with a guy like Menu Samoa, you know he's getting older, still athletic as heck, but uh, you got to manage his minutes a lot. So that's probably why. He's good to go. Scrum halves. Sean Davies, Glendale Raptors. Uh, Nate Augsburger, Old Blue, New York. Fly halves. AJ McGinty. Uh, Sell Sharks. Will Maggie, Glendale Raptors. Centers. Uh, Marcel Brocky, uh, plays 12. Uh, now out of the defunct Western Force and still alive Perth Spirit in the NRC. Uh, Bryce Campbell plays a lot of 13. Uh, on the Eagles, plays a bunch of 12 with Glendale. And then let's go to wings, only two wings. Kind of weird. Uh, Ryan Matias uh, out of Old Blue, New York. And Josh Whippy, as they say, the Uruguayans say down in uh, uh, Montevideo, uh, out of BYU. Uh, earning a spot from the uh, USA Selects. Fullbacks, we've got Mikey Teo. He's unattached right now. Hopefully uh, the San Diego MLR team picks him up. That would be nice. Uh, then we got Blaine Scully from the Cardiff Blues. He also plays a lot of wings, so this is kind of interesting. I've never personally seen him play fullback, but you know, would be I need to look, and I'm, I'm guessing he's played plenty of fullback for Cardiff. Uh, then we've got J.P. Eloff. Uh, Chicago Lions, he also plays fly half. He's really the only uh, one that I would call like a pure fullback because uh, fly halves and fullbacks tend to interchange, you know, when you're bringing them on. Uh, you know, when you're training, I guess, a new fly half, they play a lot of fullback is what I've seen. Whereas, you know, I would change that up a bit. I want my fullbacks a lot bigger. I want them to be able to do the same type of kicking stuff that fly halves do. But we'll see where that goes in the coming years. Uh, then let's get into this, uh, this coaching staff. I really like this coaching staff uh, that Haji and Mags have put together for, uh, you know, the interim basis that I think they'll be in charge because Super Rugby doesn't start uh, until after the Six Nations ARC window. So I think this is the staff. So it's first assistant for the set piece. He was a prop with uh, playing throughout the end of the old Super League. Uh, he's eagle number 396, currently works for Atavis, uh, and he's a forwards coach with the Seattle Saracens. I wouldn't be surprised to see him either continue on as a coach with the Seattle Seawolves or even play with the Seawolves because he's very young. He's, you know, not even 30. He's 29. 
uh, played professionally with the London Welsh. Then let's, uh, the assistant coach for defense is David Williams. Uh, you know, uh, he's from Bristol, all right, but he's an eagle, number 337. He's also the head coach of the Glendale Raptors, and for about four and a half years, while also playing sevens most of that time, kind of weird, uh, like I said, Eagle 337 for 15s, while also playing sevens most of that time, he was the Eagle strength and conditioning coach under, like, three coaches? Yeah, so that's, you know, it's pretty intense. Uh, then for another assistant, we've got Greg McWilliams, who uh, in his rugby playing career, he uh, was on the Ireland College's rep side, so that's kind of cool. But uh, he's currently the director of rugby for Yale, and, you know, as far as his coaching resume, it's out there. Uh, you know, I'm surprised uh, he's not being poached by Ireland women because he's coached uh, he's been a very successful assistant with the Ireland women over the years before he took the uh, the Yale job. And, you know, they speak very highly of him. However, the head coach position over there is going to be part-time. Kind of weird. Uh, but definitely uh, good to see him as the assistant head coach. Um, then let's get into our interim head coach. Uh, this is interesting. Uh, Dave Hewitt, Hod, uh, Dave Hodges, also played with him uh, at one point in that, both of their careers. Uh, he's currently an, uh, an assistant with the Crusaders and has been since 2010. He is all black, number 695. He is a prop. Shout out to the front row. All right. And he has 22 all black caps. So let's get into my analysis of this team, and I really wonder what's going on. Uh, more so with the forwards than anything else, uh, and the halves. So, Eric Fry, Lucet, Racing Club Vent, or Rugby Club Vent, as it were. Uh, he's the only natural uh, loose head that was named. And he's played a ton in the Pro D2. I, I see why he's back, you know. Uh, we're a little banged up up there. But uh, I have some questions. Uh, Olive Khalifi, and I know he just signed with the Seawolves, but all the matches I've seen him play in BC Premier League, I, I don't see him fit right now to come back to the Eagles. Uh, he's been getting dominated by a bunch of opposing loose heads, and he's the captain for the Saracens, so it's really, it really has me confused as to why he was selected. Now, uh, come January, when he's in a professional environment, can he work back into form and be ready to go? Uh, yeah, I mean, he's an eagle prop. Uh, he once played at, a, at this level. Yeah, I could definitely see him back in form. But he hasn't been in form uh, during this year. So I don't know what film the, the high-performance guys were watching. Then we got Patty Ryan. He was a debutante this summer. Uh, like I said, he was playing at Newcastle. And then he was playing uh, most recently at Bath. Now he's playing with Highfield RFC. Pretty good. I think he's going to attempt to crack into a, uh, a an Irish provincial team. And if not, we need to get him back here in an MLR squad. Because uh, he's he's a great young prop. I, I like what I saw from him. just need him to uh, lean out a bit. More so into like that Southern Hemisphere style of prop. Uh, again, Dino, like Dino Waldron, he's playing with London Scottish. Uh, you know, I like... These two tight heads, two young tight heads coming in uh, right there. So that's awesome. Uh, of note, players that weren't selected. T. Lomosatelli, I don't think he's cleared to play. I think he's just started uh, non-contact work with uh, Saracens. He would be the, you know, the first choice loose head in my mind. Chris Bowman, who plays tight head, is injured. He's playing with Leicester Tigers. Uh, guys, and this this is where I get really weird. 
Tony Perpura, uh, you know, just broke back out into the fold uh, under at the end of Mitchell's reign. But he played decently. So I don't understand if, you know, if I'm choosing between uh, Khalifi and uh, Tony Perpura, I'm putting Tony Perpura up there. And he plays, you know, for Old Blue, so he's playing at a very high level. And he just played in a match this last week and played pretty well. Uh, then we've got another loose head, Alex Mogan. Eagle number 508, if you don't know him. Uh, why wasn't he selected? He played pretty well in uh, the uh, in the America's Pacific Challenge. And then you've also got Alex Vorster, who's an Eagle select. Uh, wondering what's up with him. And then if we go to, you know, props that played their way into the squad as a tight head and not a loose head, uh, Angus McClellan, where's he? He friggin' that dude with that wily hair. Like, why? Why is why is he not here? I, I understand why Dino and Patty are selected. I got that, but you know, we could bring in another fit tight head, in addition to another fit loose head, or we could have, you know. Two fit loose heads in the squad, three fit, yeah, at least two fit loose heads in the squad, and then a utility prop. Because right now there's only four props. That's insane. Uh, so let's go into hookers. Uh, you know, you're looking at two of the top three uh, available hookers in the uh, U.S. pool right now. Uh, then you've got, you know, other cat players like Zach Denoglio. I don't know. Uh, what's going on with him. He's played a little bit less for Glendale recently, and I don't know if that's just, you know, transferring the young guys onto the Glendale D1 team or if he's got some injuries. But the guy that's, uh, you know, not in the squad is James Helterbrand. You know, he's living in Australia, played in the Shoot Shield, and has played in the Super. Don't, he's probably got life stuff going on right there. Uh, so, uh, you know, originally... It was only listed as Peter Malcolm, and there was no extra hooker. So, you know, Joe Tafate is like my first choice hooker for over, you know, just the way he plays. But Peter Malcolm, bam, bam, he plays great as well. So I think he'll be able to provide that lift off, uh, you know, in the last 30 minutes of the match. Uh, or he can start, you know. They, they're both kinds of players that can lift the match, and they're both players that can definitely start. Uh, so, no real issues with Hooker, just wondering where James Hilton Brain is. Uh, locks. Uh, so, we've got five. Why do we got five? Uh, for, for the most part, our locks tend to be very durable. And so, we chose five locks uh, instead of having an extra prop. I don't understand. Uh, Brakely, Savetta, Landry, Peterson, Tamalau. So, we've got, you know, four... Uh, you know, four professionals here, and then, you know, a guy who's working his ass off to stay at the top end in the amateur game. The only uh, lock that sort of missed out is Matt Jensen. Uh, you know, not really sure why, but, you know, the top locks were selected in the pool. I just wonder, really, why David Tamalau was selected as a lock. Because he plays a lot of six. I, I know some of these guys are interchangeable, but I, I don't get it. And then, you know, I think we could have left off a flanker, uh, you know, because uh, we've chose four. Uh, Andrew Duratalo, Henko Hamishais, uh, Tony Lamborn, John Quill. Uh, of the two guys that I wanted, I would like to see at the Eagles level, uh, Aladdin Shermer, uh, who's already capped, uh, wonder, you know, I thought he played very, very well uh, in the APC. And then Saul Mooching, still raw, uh, still playing. You know, I think uh, time with the Seawolves is going to benefit him, but I would have liked to have seen him called up. But, I mean, we're looking at, you know, the top flankers in the pool right now. Uh, you know, I would maybe slide uh, Tamalau over to uh, flanker and, you know, overall, but no real controversy there for me. I would maybe select one less, and we, you know, 
because you you would select two number eights that can flip in and flip out. That also and one of them is like a utility loose, uh, which we'll see. Uh, but very good players. And then going into number eights, uh, Cam Dolan, Manu Samoa, the two top, you know, number eights we got in the pool. Sebastian Cole, where's he? It'd be nice if we kept him, or at least brought him up to the Eagles selects for the next assembly because. Once you uh, capture them in the senior squad or the next senior squad, uh, they can't go play for a, their previous country or unless they go through the Olympic program. Uh, scrum half, Sean Davies and Nate Augsburger. Uh, what? Sean Davies, for the most part, between the two is leaps and bounds far and away ahead of getting the ball out when it comes to being a scrum half versus Nate. I think Nate can be very dynamic on the wing, but uh, I do... I, I, in fact, hate Nate Augsburger as a scrum half. He... You can't hide him at scrum half. Scrum half is a very technical position, and he's just... I don't know what it is. He's just not there for me. I would have really liked to have seen Holden Youngert or Ruben De Haas backing up uh, Sean Davies, because I think these two guys, they're going to push Sean Davies and Nate Augsburg out of the job. Because these guys are dirty. If you watch them in the APC, it was it was wild. They, they got the ball out fast. It was great. Um, fly half. Nothing really, uh, you know, controversial here. AJ McGinty, Will Maggie, two top fly halves in the system right now. But I got to say, Somebody needs to cap Connor Mills. Like, that dude's, that dude's a massive fly half. But he's a fly half. Like, he's got all the ball skills. He's got the kicks. He's not a center. Uh, maybe call him up and put him at fullback. But, and that would be perfect. Like, you know, a 6'2", thick fullback who can just kick the ball 50. That's how I want to play. You know. So why hasn't... Why hasn't he been capped or put in? Yeah. Centers, um, you know, not really. There, there's no real uh, controversy with this. Uh, there's just two of them, Marcel Rocky, uh, you know, and Bryce Campbell. Two top centers uh, in the, uh, you know, in our... Uh, in our program, but I wonder why we didn't bring uh, another wing and just uh, have one full lap named. Uh, and, you know, that wing would be a versatile center or wing, like, say, Matai Leuda. Um, But of the, uh, and I'll get into Matai Leuda a little bit, but uh, the guy that was sort of left out who played in the APC was Lamoto Filikatanga. Phil Number 470. I'm wondering, you know, why he's not up there. Uh, but again, top two guys. Uh, and they're very durable, so no issues there. Wing, you've got Ryan Matias and Josh Whippy. Josh Whippy, man. He worked himself into this squad down in South America during the APC. Good to see him get the, uh, the call-up. Uh, wondering why Tim Moppin or Matai Liuta weren't called up for to play wing, considering, you know, we have three fullbacks for some reason. Um, so Mikey Teo, I like him at fullback, but he's not interchangeable. I don't. I think he's a good, very good wing, but uh, he just, you know, you look at his film. He does that Islander step and a bunch of these Islander blind passes that really annoy me. But he can be very dynamic coming out of the backfield. Um, Blaine Scully, uh, he's going to captain the side, but he's like an 11. I don't understand why he's playing 15. I've never seen him play 15. Uh, J.P. Eloff, uh, definitely like the third fly half uh, ranked in our program. He's more of like your pure uh, fullback fly half uh, interchangeability guy. Uh, good to see him called up. Uh, the only one that, uh, you know, that got left off is Ben Seema, number 504. Uh, that one's pretty easy for me. He's a senior in college. He probably has 
you know, finals uh, or midterms that he has to just knock out. So, uh, overall, um, when it comes to the back line, no controversy for me for the most part. I think we selected, over selected on fullbacks. So we could have dropped one of those guys and thrown a prop up. Uh, over selected on locks. Uh, and throw, we could have thrown a prop up there. And, you know, maybe we over-selected on, uh, on flankers as well. And we could have, you know, brought in either an extra hooker or an extra prop. So we would have, I would say, you know, another versatile guy who can play both loose head and tight head. So we could have, you know, seven props up there. Because those, those guys are really the ones that get injured the most, I think. And, you know... When fit, fitness was a big thing with Mitch, and people thought he made some weird decisions. But this front row really has me scratching my head. Uh, you know, he only chose four guys, and one of them has played not a lot of good rugby this year. So, there you have it. Uh, you'll have my preview out before... Uh, the match against Germany, and then you'll have my preview out before the match against uh, Georgia, and then I think I'll uh, do a, a, a hook live with Tosan Touche Tomway following uh, the match against Georgia. So hopefully I can see it, and it's not behind a paywall. Hmm. Well, that's the hook. Like, subscribe, comment down below, get in the conversation, get in the game, go Eagles.